All right, here we are. This time I can tell you at the top of Angry Midget. Drift the speed. Oh, here's a pull that I can do though. It's just too fun not to. That Casper is probably one of the most popular trails in Squamish besides Half Nelson, but more of a tech trail. I really like this trail. I've ridden it a ton of times, but today we're gonna try to do something different. And I saw something interesting in Ben Cather's last vlog where he kind of did a POV time comparison. And I was curious on a trail like this, one that I've never actually hiked before, how much faster the racing line is. So I'm gonna try to talk my way down at 80% and take kind of what I think is the main line. And then I'm gonna go do a track walk video, kind of break it down. Cause like I said, I've never broken this trail down before. So I'm curious what I'll actually find. And then try to do the same 80% speed on the racing line, compare the times and just see like how much line choice only makes a difference. Here we go. All right, top of the trail. Starting, angry midget, clipped in. Okay, talking our way down, not too quick. That was maybe too quick. It's kind of muddy, so you gotta be careful. Right down, just bumping through, through. And then around this corner, coming wide. I mean, I'm always gonna hit that wide. Doesn't matter if it's main line or not. Here, kind of through, down, bumping through. It's actually kind of interesting to change the mindset that I'm so used to. A couple pedal strokes just to keep speed up here. Cruising through, not too wet here. Over this thing, bumpy bumpy. All right, that's probably gonna get really annoying. This line, first kind of line choice over this drop. Makes this corner down here a little bit tighter. All right, here's one I'm super excited about because I think it really just shows the type of rider you are and what you kind of focus on in the trail. So this is a section that has a kind of a major split where you have this main line over a rock right in the middle here to kind of a left that's hard but not too hard or you have this kind of slightly veering right line that just rounds out nicely this whole corner so for me i'm more confident in doing tech lines than nailing a corner every time so i've always come out of this corner veered wide and just rounded out this whole corner and not had to think too much about the corner at the bottom otherwise there's this drop which is you know it's fun but then you're kind of on the brakes another little drop and then you have to hit that corner the corner at the bottom it's actually like totally fine. And I did it in that, that mainline video just there. You know, there's tons of traction here. It's not too tight and it kind of actually opens up nicely. It doesn't really close out. You kind of open up and go all the way around there. The thing with this, the outside line would definitely be the go-to if there's a longer section of trail afterwards that you need to carry your speed for. But because you don't have to, like it's not as important to kind of keep your speed consistent and come out and round out the corner. So I'm gonna do this line in my race line and uh, I'm curious kind of the time differences. Coming through, take it nice and wide, just being around, super smooth. And then coming through, uh, it's kind of spotty. I was hoping to wait for uh, some better light, but whatever, gotta do what you gotta do. Never liked that corner, also this next corner. So I'm curious to actually walk this one and see what the best line is. How is that actually pretty smooth? We will squeeze through here, down. Trying to open that up already, but whatever. Down, couple big compressions. For this line, because there's no line choice, just something a bit more nuanced. We got kind of some drops coming in, whatever. Then you got kind of triple drop almost to a corner. If you're coming in too quick, you're kind of gonna like float over those drops, which would be nice if there was in the corner, but there's a corner up there that you might just end up being like, oh, like have a panic break and just break way too much more than you need to, to a stop and then get around that corner. So knowing that that's ahead, I would kind of hit this as fast as I can. Got one of these dips that I was talking about how you got extra gravity. So you kind of compressing and get a lot of your braking done before you come over this rise here. And you kind of see like drop, 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 hard left corner. So if you get all your braking done kind of here, you can kind of stay low to the ground be more kind of in an attack position, getting over those rocks, you not have too much speed, and then you can carry that speed that you have, come around the corner, you're not gonna have to brake too much and get on pump or whatever, and you're not gonna get mad at yourself for making a mistake, you're gonna carry speed around, you're not gonna pedal out of it. So really this is one of those like slow as fast, just do it in control and don't mess up that corner. So make sure to think about that when I'm doing my race line. Put yourself down here so that you don't have to break too much for that corner. And this part kind of fast and kind of a little bit eroded from all this rain so what this corner always got away from you oh. a bit of a rut 
Uh, this is a line that I've actually genuinely been curious about. I wasn't sure, so I wanted to actually do it just to get a feel for if the inside worked, first of all. And it was another lesson for me that always getting on your bike and trying something on your bike is way different than looking at something. Because I would look at this, and I'm seeing I'm coming over this rise, that is a hard corner to hit. And I thought that was gonna be the case, but as soon as I hit it on my bike, I was like, oh man, totally got traction. Like it actually angles a bit. Once you're like in the corner, you can see you're banked a bit and just throw it into that corner and you come out. If you're coming in with more speed, um, I think it would be more key to go around. Like right now it's wet. So I'm losing a lot of speed in this, in this mud bog here. So I'm not coming into this berm corner with as much speed. So I can kind of get inside and kind of almost carry the same amount of speed around that corner. If it was dry and fast, I'd probably be coming in here really hot and want to keep my speed as long as possible to get to this nice bermed corner. So that's something that might change based on the conditions. That corner, the grip is kind of perfect in the corners that there is no mud, which is pretty usual here. Quick camera wipe. Oh God, that was sketchy. I don't think jumps are main line, so we'll leave those for the racing line video. All right, we're at the jumps. I decided not to hit in the main line. Um, I was kind of actually hoping that not both of them would be faster, but it turns out that they are both faster only because this first one, it just allows you to open up this whole section. So when you're here and you land here, it just straightens out the whole thing all the way down there. Whereas if you're in the main line, you can kind of see I'm going to want to hit this jump here and it's just kind of, I'm going to have to be turning and there's more complexity to that. So this one, it does work to do both jumps. And then the other thing with this one is you kind of don't have to pull it. Like this one, you're going to have enough speed that you come in, pump in, you carry speed out into the next jump, nice pump straight, and then just kind of come around the whole track. So you set yourself up wide, straight, got some training for speed. It's a jump, you generally have to pick up full speed before it and then you kind of come up with more speed. So that was kind of nice. It's actually kind of fun just to roll through it with normal speed and not have to find all the tech lines. Just follow the way the trail was meant to go. Just found a little sneaky setup line that Riding a trail so many times you kind of don't always see these little lines that kind of add up I think when you're racing and something like if you're going to do a track walk like for downhill and you can memorize every section of track these things are important whereas an enduro I don't walk tracks I just kind of focus on the key points and get my consistent lines but this one because if I put myself here where I'm kind of starting the turn I can almost just wiggle straight through whereas if I'm here when I'm starting it I have to have to go a little bit more left and a little bit more right. So setting yourself up a tiny bit when the trail allows you to is key because it kind of opens up the corner and it just makes it a longer corner where you can carry more speed around and you don't have to do as much braking, don't have to rely as much on like traction and kind of being nervous. You just give yourself the best chance at going around the corner as fast as you can. So this one, I'm not sure what we're gonna do here. Let's hit that, pump, pull, hop. That was definitely not mainline stuff. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, that was sketchy. Coming into that super muddy corner. Here's a pull that I can do though. Ah! Just too fun not to. That Casper is sick. Jump line up here. Not pedaling because, oh god, I wanted to do camera wipe. Wow. Sick corner here. This corner actually I really don't like. Come down. Not sure if this rock is main line, but I have an idea for what I want to do there. All right, another super interesting section actually that looks simple on the surface, but has a lot more going into it. First time running down this trail, you would hit this left-hander and see like the trail kind of goes this way and then just kind of take this fading right. And then you got this whole other section down there, but looking at it now, which is something that I've, I've probably, I've probably done that almost every time unless I've messed up this corner and couldn't kind of come out of it enough and I would have gotten sent straight. I think the quicker line, because this corner is slow and kind of sketchy already, you don't have to make it all the way around the crux of the corner. You kind of just make it as much as you need to straighten out, not go left there, straighten it out. And then you're gonna basically straight shot this section, which sets you up into the next line. Something that I've always done is hopped over this, this nice little gap that I thought was cool, gave you speed, set you up for that rock drop up here. What I'm seeing now, honestly just walking this is if I'm coming straight into this section it's gonna kind of straighten me out I'm gonna take this 
little wide hop line because what it's going to do again is just set me up and then I'm going to have a direct line to the next corner where I have to slow down again. So it's all about, well, not trying to turn too much on the trail. You just want straight, you know, straight is fast. And so you're setting yourself up for straight lines. You don't have to think too much. You're not having to corner over like, you know, if you had to come in here and think, okay, well, if you're going to go inside, you might as well just go inside this whole way. And it's just going to be hard to consistently hit this corner at speed when you're kind of getting out of control with all these little things in the way. So if you can come straight here, set up this line, a little bit of a hop, get down and then straighten yourself out. So what you're going to do is you're going to hop to this little root thing and then you can see the corner is right here and I'm just straight on to that corner. So it basically takes any inconsistency out. When I was talking about my last video about it's okay to get a little bit out of control if you know you're gonna get in control again. So here I'm setting myself up straight and all I gotta do is kind of just wiggle my way through this straight line and then get to that corner at the end where I again, slow down, get into control and kind of reset on my riding. Okay, I think the more important part, they fell at almost the same speed, straight down line. I didn't have to try as hard to set up for this corner where I was doing the drop. I had to land the drop, get under control, change direction, get the corner. Whereas the straight line all the way from uh, redirect up there, I was looking down at this corner I had the whole time to prepare, set up for this corner. Straight and simple down to set yourself up for success right from the beginning of the line. So stoked on that one. Take it straight, so you're gonna set yourself up, come straight down, right into this corner. And then this bottom line, I actually, all right, we got a super interesting one here. As I'm looking at it, there's an inside line here and then a left-hander here. We're coming out of a left-hander here and then we kind of have a wide right-hander with a nice supported outside line and then the inside and then to a left. So you'd think, oh, like inside, that's sick. It's, it'll be way better. Set up, so you can get inside, round this corner out. Here you're gonna get. But the thing with that is if you're thinking about that, you're kind of already subconsciously not going as fast as you can be, because you're gonna be hitting this left corner and lowering, okay, I'm hitting this left corner, I gotta get up and high and set up. So you're thinking that and it just kind of slows you down without you even thinking about it. Whereas if there's berms, you just know, okay, Smash left hander, smash right hander, just go, go, go. I'm gonna give this one a test because I am actually genuinely interested in which one I can do faster. And that's something that's always interesting and something that I always think about when I'm racing is uh, kind of what suits your style the best. For me, I would probably just focus on hitting outside, 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 carrying consistent speed and knowing I can do that kind of every time. Never know where to go. I just always go tight into the dip. But the last feature of this trail, which has always puzzled me because it may have been dirt, more dirt at one point, but you're kind of coming in with a bit of speed and you're at the end of the trail, so maybe you're a bit tired and all you can see is this rock and you can see it's a bit off camber so you, you can kind of actually bank that and hit the hit the dirt as wide as possible and round out this whole thing um in the wet you probably just slow up and come down the gut and then hit the corner so yeah i think main line and racing line are kind of the same where you just slow up and you go inside and racing line would be kind of get up bank that rock basically a banked berm and you kind of make the corner as wide as possible which we know is kind of the best thing to carry your speed around the corner and then main line might just be kind of slow up and, and kind of go through the middle, which is fine, especially in the wet. Come out. And then we're done. Nice. Looks like the camera didn't get too muddy. So hopefully that one worked. I'll do it again. Now we're going to hike up and check it out. Ooh.